A forgotten artifact lies in pieces on a planet far from Earth. Few know it exists except those who took it back and those whose ancestors created it. Four young people are thrown into a race against emissaries of the gods to find its pieces. Mistrust, greed, and magic are tangled in an endless web. What will the fate be of the universe once it is found and reassembled? Get Scepter of the Gods, The Rod of Truth now on Amazon and get wrapped up in the saga that will not let you go. Good morning, and welcome to the Motivational Devotion, where we are merging motivation and spirituality to create a daily dose of confident positivity. I hope that this morning's podcast will help you to be more spiritually and positively motivated so that you can transform your day. This is a special episode in a series of podcasts based on Stephen Covey's book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. For several years now, I have gone back to the habits taught in this book to prepare for the coming year and home in closer and closer to my lifelong dream and my goals so that I could more effectively achieve my goals. Year after year, we hear people joking about setting New Year's resolutions and then abandoning them by February. Personally, I don't find that very funny. I hope that your resolutions are more important to you than to give them up after only a month or two. What if you were to set one, two, maybe three at the most resolutions or goals for 2024, and then at the end of 2024, find that you nailed each one of them? You can. I set two goals that to me were very large. As I talk about in the motivational devotional, I had to change and grow to become more than I was in order to achieve those goals. As I say this now, I have done that. I changed. I grew. I achieved. Starting with the November 27, 2023 podcast and running through the New Year's Eve podcast, This series offers 35 episodes of principles, inspiration, and motivation that I use toward fulfilling my own lifelong dream. I have audacious goals for 2024, but only three, because more than that will water down your efforts. I will achieve mine by this time next year. You can do the same, and I hope you will pursue yours with relentless intent. If you find these helpful, please go to the Motivational Devotional Facebook page and let me know. For now, let's get on with it. Do you have those mornings when you want to choose what you're going to do for the day, but there are so many things from previous days piled up that you know you will only get to the past stuff that has now become urgent? I've been a to-do list kind of a guy for a long time. I get almost depressed, though, when the to-do list starts to be my boss instead of being a tool that I use to keep myself organized. It's more frustrating when you're in an atmosphere where other people can pop into your office or catch you walking by and give you another thing that needs done, so you add it to your list, and by the end of a day, your list is longer than when you started the day, even though you were very busy all day long knocking out your tasks. What if those things other people put on your plate might be important, but not very urgent, and yet they expect you to make it your top priority? To you, it isn't all that urgent and you just don't have the time, so you decide to do it later. How long does it take for that non-urgent thing to sit on the sidelines until it becomes yet one more of the urgent things on your to-do list? Eventually, that to-do list can be a long list of things that seem urgent, but they've been on there so long that one would have to wonder how urgent it is if it's been on there a month. Your productivity tool can become a swamp of activity that bogs you down and keeps you from being productive at all. The habit of being proactive is the first of the seven habits of highly effective people because unless a person is proactive, none of the other habits can help a person get much done. The whole thing of being proactive is that the pro part means anticipating things well before they are urgent. I look at it like building a house. You can't design and lay out the floor plan if you're trying to nail boards together to frame up the walls and urgently trying to decide where they need to go. Being proactive means getting things done before any supplies arrive at the job site. It's about having not just the plan, but planning the work, setting up who is going to do what and when, and planning out the supplies that will be needed all the way to the last doorknob. 
being proactive is really hard if you come into a job where your predecessor left a ton of things undone and before your first day, everything was already urgent. That scenario may be more common than people might like to think, but even then, a person would have to do whatever it would take to reduce the number of urgent things and transform them into things that can be addressed proactively. If you are constantly putting out fires, eventually the house will burn down. We can live our lives in the midst of the turmoil of urgency. Most of that urgency is important, and some of that urgency is not so important. Learning the dance between taking care of urgency while paying attention to things before they become urgent takes practice and patience. Even though we may have a pile of urgency on a desk, after it's been there a few days, it kind of loses the legitimate label of being urgent. The task in this first most basic habit of a proactive person is to put aside all the urgency and take just a moment. Look at the stuff that needs to be done. Sort it out between what is urgent and what is not so urgent. Sort the urgent stuff between what is critically important and what is not so important. You know that email stating that you need to submit your survey responses before a deadline? Probably not so urgent, even though someone else has placed an arbitrary deadline. Delegate what you can of the stuff that is important, as well as urgent, and then make a plan to knock out the remainder of those. Then look at the important things that are not so urgent and prioritize them. Spend a little time every day with that list and work on advanced activities that will get the important things done before they are urgent, and then you will have fewer and fewer crises and fewer and fewer urgent things to do. Before getting too far along with that process, though, reflect on your overall goals, look at which of these important things are critical to those goals, and then those are the highest priority of your important things. We will get more deeply into this in the podcast about beginning with the end in mind. You will proactively set in place decisions that will eventually take away all the crises. It is a paradigm shift in our approach to life, but it does work, and it works well. Get out from behind the eight ball and sink that sucker in the pocket where it belongs. The more proactive you can be in pursuing your lifelong dreams, the more you experience that all of creation is conspiring in your favor. Trust that the universe always has your back. Stephen Covey said, The proactive approach to a mistake is to acknowledge it instantly. Correct yourself and learn from it. Thank you for taking the time to listen today. Please help keep this podcast going by following the Motivational Devotional Facebook page, following at Threefold Way Radio on Twitter, and sharing the written format of today's message from motivational-devotional.com on your social media. I am deeply grateful for your support and thank you for letting Motivational Devotional be part of your journey. Peace out. See you tomorrow. Three Fold Way Radio, LLC.